guys, hope you guys welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. I'm Deja. Hello. This is my background music. Cause I don't wanna get copyrighted. So I made my own shit to this beat. Kinda land low key, but join the team. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. So today's video, I'm just gonna let you guys know 10 things. I wish I would have known before having laid in. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk as much because I'd be rambling. I'm gonna just get straight into the video. If you're not yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow me on all my social media accounts. They are down below. So open up the description, look at layouts, and yeah, let's just get straight to the video. So the first one I have is a cradle cap. Okay, this is like a big, big thing for me. So Layden did have like really bad cradle cap, which caused him to lose his hair. Oh my god, my baby was bald. Um, he is getting his hair back. Cradle cap is all gone. Um, what cradle cap is, is just like dandruff or dry scalp for babies. They don't call it dandruff. They just call it cradle cap. So that's what that is. I feel like he got it because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, like it is my first child. First child is always like trial and error, honestly. The reason he got it is because, you know, I wasn't like treating his like hair, like our hair. I didn't know that you can like shampoo baby's hairs like that young of a child so um when i would give him a bath and stuff you know he didn't take a bath every day he took he took one like every three four days so when i would give him a bath we would just rinse his hair under the water and that's it like we didn't apply any type of oils like any shampoo conditioner nothing it was so bad oh my god and i felt so bad because i'm like how did i allow this to happen like why was i so stupid to think like you can't even shampoo a kid's hair like that's why they make baby shampoo <laughs> and the second one is like um the feeling of being a parent like it's so overwhelming so stressful it's a lot, okay? And I knew about postpartum like depression and anxiety, but I didn't know the extent of it, okay? But um like it's it's real. It's it's overwhelming to think of having to have someone else depend on you. Like I'm laden well you know like we're laden's everything. Like he depends on us for everything. He needs us and that alone is the most stressful thing in the world. It's like you have someone that needs you for everything is like they need you to live okay they need you to do everything for them and then it's another like stress on top of that one when it's like they're looking up to you as like god like you're you're the person teaching them everything that they're going to learn so that's like really stressful and overwhelming and it's like i had to let myself know like it's okay like in a parent you're not gonna be perfect um, you're gonna have days where you don't know what to do um so it's like trial and error basically you just have to figure out what works best for you and your household so i just wish i would have known how stressful it it is going to be before having a kid um to the extent because i knew it was going to be stressful but it's like is overwhelming that that's the thing it's overwhelming another thing um like postpartum wise is like the body changes in like the whole extent of it okay like i knew you know you're gonna have body changes but it's like after you have a kid like the postpartum effects of it like for me um one big thing was my stomach okay i've always had like a flat stomach before i was pregnant i actually um am like way slimmer and skinnier and i weigh less than what i did before i even had laden so that for me is a big thing like i'm way smaller than i was before um and right after having him you know how they like your stomach's loose and stuff it's still trying to go back into tack and um i did have a c-section so i couldn't right away put on like you know one of those belly bands that they have you put on or like wrap your stomach saran wrap it's a lot of like remedies and techniques here about doing to get your stomach back flat and get your organs back intact but i couldn't do that because i had a c-section so it's like you're scarring you can't really apply any pressure or like um get it all sweaty and stuff it's a lot to do with that okay but um my stomach was is dark it still is darker than my whole body and that's like really weird for me because i'm like why is this but i guess it's just from like your stomach stretching stuff and like i don't know when that's gonna go away Layden's almost eight months and it still is like darker than my whole body um and another thing like i didn't have stretch marks well visible stretch marks while i was pregnant but like now i have stretch marks on my stomach which is really weird because i'm like where were they but 
they was there. And um, another thing is boobs breastfeeding. Okay, let me tell you, I didn't, I've never had boobs, okay? I didn't have boobs before having Layden. I got some boobs, you know, they filled up with milk and I was feeling myself. <laughs> I was like, guys, I have boobs. Here I am. And then, you know, after you're done breastfeeding, they just boom, boom. They look worse than what they did before, okay? I literally have zero. Zero now. I had some back then. I have zero now, okay? <sighs> so sad. <laughs> All right, sorry if the angle's a little different or the lighting's different. My camera died. I'm trying to hurry up and do this before the natural light goes away because that's what I'm using right now. And my camera dies again, so let's just hurry it is up. I don't know where I was. I don't know what I was talking about. Sorry. Oh, 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 I need to mention another thing. Um, after you get a C-section, they don't tell you this, but you know, some of your nerves do die in your stomach. So it's like, on for me, at the top of like the c-section i cannot feel anything like my stomach is still numb and that's because you know they cut you open and they do cut some of your nerves so that's that so let's get to number four teething okay like i know that all babies teeth like you know and the drooling part of it but i did not know that they can catch like fevers um they can have like a change in their bowel movements um they do get like drool rashes i did not know that was a thing for instance Layden, he has a rash underneath his chin on the side of his neck and like it was on his chest but i got that cleared up so now he just has one like on his chin so drool rashes are a thing in teeth for a long time Layden started teething when he was three months old he's still teething now um they can teeth up to like two three years old and they can teeth a long time before even getting their first tooth so number five would be um attachment okay i know that like your baby is going to be attached to you in some kind type of way because you know they are your child i did not know the extent of attachment that Layden was going to have Layden is so 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 attached to me like if i go out of his view like his sight he'll cry and it's weird because it's like he is living in a household with both of his parents so i'm like why are you so attached to me when you see both of us equal amount of time throughout the day but i don't know Layden is just so attached to me and it's crazy like right now he's upstairs with his dad but it's like as soon as i go up there and he sees me he'll get so excited like i've been gone for a week like it's crazy but it's just the cutest little thing in the world number six which is a big 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 thing um i wrote down do what works for you okay you're gonna have everyone coming at you with all type of opinions especially if it's your first kid you're gonna get so many opinions on what to do what not to do what products to use what not to use so many things and it's honestly don't listen to them like don't care what other people have to say it's your child um you're gonna know what works best for your kid what to do best for your kid although it may be your first child just go off of instincts because like a mother's instinct is true it's it's a real thing so do what you believe what works best for your kid um take their opinions with like how can i put this with like a grain of salt okay don't be rude about it and let them think like you don't care but you know don't really care number seven a schedule you need to have a schedule, okay? Or your life is going to be hectic. Try to get your kid on a schedule as soon as possible. Layden, we have him on his napping schedule and it's been like this for about four or five months now and um, he knows his schedule. He knows when it's bedtime, he sleeps throughout the night, the whole night now. So he knows when it's bedtime. Um, at times, he gets sleepy around those times. So make sure you just have a schedule. It's better for your life honestly it's it's the best thing in the world <laughs> number eight self-love you guys is not a bad thing you know take some time out of your day for yourself like don't feel bad about wanting to have mommy time or time to yourself because it's like you need that to keep you sane because it is being a mom is like the hardest job in the world it is and it's like you know just take some time to yourself enjoy you time so that you could be a, the best you the best mom the best dad you can be so yeah have you time and don't feel shamed about it okay and at number nine i have planning never goes as planned which is true okay let me explain that when Layden, before Layden was even born um 
I had a lot of things in mind, plan what to do, when to do it. And you know, none of those things happen. It's like you can plan your day like the night before and with the kid, it's never gonna go as planned, okay? It's never gonna go as planned, so don't even have a plan in mind. Don't have expectations of how your day is gonna go because it's not gonna go like that. <laughs> and for you to have those expectations, it's gonna be so stressful because it's not gonna go anywhere near as planned. So just don't have a plan, just go with the win. Go with the kid, because the kid controls the day, okay? <laughs> and number 10, do not overbuy. Um, I know you're gonna be so excited of having like your child, or even it's like not your first kid, but you're gonna be so excited and you're gonna think everything is cute, like baby clothes are so cute. Don't buy a lot of newborn clothes, okay? They're only gonna wear it one time, if that, okay? If you do wanna buy a lot, buy in advance, like buy for when they're one, two, three. Okay, buy when they're that old. Don't try to buy, which we've messed up on because we have a lot of like three to six month clothes, a lot. And now, Landon still can fit some of them, but we have to buy more clothes, so I'm gonna be buying like 12, to 18 month clothes because I don't want to have to be in this situation where he only fits X amount of clothes so make sure you don't buy too much of like like newborn okay don't do it do not do it and yeah I think that will conclude today's video if you enjoyed it make sure you give it a big thumbs up and if you're not yet subscribed and you made it this far in the video why hit that subscribe button like I said before make sure you follow me on all my social media accounts love you guys bye